Hello everybody, today I want to talk about drum editing. Because editing drums, let's be honest, has become one of the most important and one of the most time consuming parts of every rock and metal production. And if you want to become a professional rock or metal engineer producer, you got to be able to edit drums professionally and fast. And you know what? I have spent thousands and thousands of hours of my life editing all kinds of drums good performances, bad performances, all kinds of genres, including what I call the Champions League of editing drums, and that is extreme metal. And today I want to give you a few tips and tricks and show you my basic editing techniques because I have just released a wonderful course called Metal Drum Editing Masterclass inside my academy called Audio Cult, where I share all my wisdom and knowledge and experience about editing drums. The course also comes with multi-tracks so you can practice and become a professional drum editor. Anyway, in this video, I want to show you whatever, 10, 15 minutes of that course. So uh, yeah, if that sounds interesting to you, check out the link below. Enough talking, let's jump right over into the course. Enjoy. Today I want to tell you everything I think is important and crucial about editing drums, but more importantly in this course I want to edit an extreme metal drum performance together with you. We will edit an entire song from start to finish and along the way I will explain everything I'm doing. There are different types of drum editing and in this course, at least in the first part of the course, I want to talk about what I call fully manual traditional editing. So what does that mean? First of all, fully manual. That means I'm going to touch every single hit and I'm going to do every single cut and every movement myself. I'm gonna not going to use any automation tools uh, to help me, something like Beat Detective. I think every major DAW has something inbuilt these days that will do the drum editing for you. We're not going to use that. First of all, because I feel it is really important that you learn how to do this manually, because there will be situations where those tools make mistakes or where they're not available, so you need to learn how to do this yourself. And this leads us to drum editing rule number Two, maybe the most important rule of them all. And that rule is that in a multi-channel recording like this, you always have to move all the tracks at the same time. Never move any single tracks without moving the other tracks. Okay? So that means if we cut something here and cut something here, you always have to move all those tracks. Never just take this tom and move it here. That's not going to work. Why is that not going to work? That's easy to understand. All those tracks have a phase relationship because all those tracks pretty much pick up all the different drums. So on the snare, you will also hear the cymbals. On the overheads, you will hear the snare and so on. And what we do during the sound check, our drum recording is, we hopefully make sure all those tracks are in phase and play nicely together, sound great together. So they have a phase relationship which sounds good, and we don't want to change that. Especially if you start editing, let's just assume I would only take my snare microphone that you see here and then move one snare here, the other snare there, the other snare hit there. That would mean that we have a different phase relation between the tracks for every single hit, and that's going to sound terrible. So if you start doing this, if you, if you start moving single tracks, you will immediately destroy your drum recording. Never do that. You always have to move all tracks at the same time. So if you want to move your snare, you select all tracks, cut it, move them all. And I can give you a little example. Let's just listen to those two snare hits. So if you just slightly move the snare, let's see what happens. It sounds thin and phasey. And if you move it even more, it will even sound like two snare hits. That makes no sense, right? So you really don't want to do that unless you want to destroy your drum recording. 
All right, I'll explain all the rest during the actual editing. And usually I just start in the beginning, do the first part, and then just chronologically go through the song. But I want to start with showing you how I work, how I do my cuts, how I do my moves. So I want to do that on a little more simple part. So I will go to this part here, cut it. So, because this one here. And before we start cutting, let me quickly talk about how you should monitor this. And with monitoring, I'm not talking about audio monitoring. I'm talking about, yeah, video monitoring. So what you want to see. And when I'm editing, I always have my overheads as the first track here. And the reason is that on the overheads, you see everything. I can see symbols, a snare, another symbol. I see hi-hats here in between. So this gives you a great overview of what's going on. And mainly you should just focus on the overheads. However, you should keep in mind that the sound will always reach the closed mics first. So if we go to this snare hit and zoom in right here, I have my snare top mic, snare bottom mic. You can see that the sound will arrive here first and it takes a while until it reaches the overhead mics from here to here, which is maybe one and a half meters. And whenever you correct something, you don't have to be too anal about this. I don't zoom in like this and cut everything exactly like this. You can do that. It will just take a lot more time because it needs more zooming. So usually I just do it like this and then I move it here and that is enough. And then I don't care, you know, about the details if it's here or here. One exception can be that whenever you also have programmed drums, like drum beats, electronic drums, something that is like 100% tight and also has a lot of bass frequencies. In those cases, it might be necessary to really move everything exactly to the grid so you don't have any phase shifts between those tracks. But normally like here, if we just have one drum kit, I, you don't have to zoom in like this and be too anal about this. One thing that you have to keep in mind is, I told you, you can mainly focus on the overheads, but what you should not do is just cut things here at the overheads, you know that snare, because you see, you will actually cut off the main attack of the snare. So you should always keep in mind that, that there's another mic, or that, that, that might be another mic, that is earlier, okay? Same thing for the hi-hat. Let's just have a look at the hi-hat. So if you wanna cut that thing here, you shouldn't just cut it right here at the overheads. You should scroll down and you see, here's our hi hat track. Make sure you cut here and then you can move it, all right? And one more important thing is your reference, the grid. You always should make sure that you have those grid lines in the background or on top of your wave files. And in Cubase, you can see it here. Now I have it on eight nodes, but could be 16 or even more precise, depending on what I need. One cool thing in Cubase, I have a shortcut when I press T, it goes to triplets, triolisch in German, and back, so I can be whatever on 16, switch to triplets and back, that's really nice. But you always need to make sure you have the right pattern selected, and that depends on the music, of course. And I always try to be, in this case, I might even go to forward notes. I always try to be as close to the music as possible because it's just irritating to see something like whatever this, you know, you just don't need this amount of detail. And if you're, it's easier to make mistakes if you see too much. So I always make sure I adapt my, my grid to whatever is being played. All right. There are two ways how you can move something, either to the left or to the right. Either it's too early or it's too late. So most of the times drummers play too fast. Let's just see what we got here. So you see this snare hit, for example, is here, but it's actually supposed to be there. So whenever you move something to the right, whenever something's too early, what you want to do is you cut right before that hit. Not right, right, right before, because remember, if I cut here, there might actually be a little fade in automatically coming from Cubase. So I want to give this a little headroom and I just cut somewhere here, okay? But pretty close to the initial hit. Next thing you would do is 
you would move this to where it belongs. And what you do next is, because you see now there's a gap. And you fill this gap by opening up the track on the right, like this. Which basically means this here is identical with this. You see, here's where the snare originally was. So that means if we fill up the gap with whatever is on the left of our snare drum, it means we have a very short repetition of this part here. So it comes here and is played back here. But as long as this is not too long, you're not going to hear this. Let's have a listen. No problem, okay? So that's what you do when a hit is too early. You cut right before the hit, move it and fill it up again. And here's what you do when a hit is too late. Like this one here. You see, snare drum hit, supposed to be here. What you do now is you cut exactly where you want that hit to be or a little earlier. That works as well. So you don't cut right at the hit, but you cut it here. And then you remove everything until that hit and then you can move it here. And again, you fill it up with the right side. Okay? So that's the difference. If you move something to the right, if something's too early, you cut right before the hit and you move the hit there, fill it up. If something is too late and you gotta move it back, you don't cut at the hit, but you cut at the point where you want the hit to be. So you start with the first hit, this one is all right. You move on to the next one. You cut it again, go here, move it. You go to the next hit, cut it again, move it. And if needed, you fill it up. You go to the next hit, cut, move. You go to the next hit, cut, move, fill it up, and so on. But you know what? There's a faster way of doing this. Let me just go back here. If you do this to the entire song, you will do thousands of clicks. So if you can save some of the clicks, if you have to do less clicks, this is very welcome. And there's a way how to speed this up quite dramatically. Every DAW these days has a, some call it slip in place or something function, which means you can move the waveform inside the window. Look at this. So I can just cut it here and move the waveform like this. In Pro Tools you can do this, in Cubase you can do this, and I'm pretty sure this also works in Reaper and Logic. And this way you can avoid having those gaps that you need to fill up. You understand? So we're not cutting it here and moving it, and then we need to do one more click to fill it up. No, we just cut and move. And that saves us even two clicks per cut, okay? What's nice in Cubase, you can see my hands here, is that the shortcuts are all centered here on the left side on a Windows computer. So with alternate, you can see my cursor turns into a um, scissors. So I press alternate, I cut. If I press alternate and option, I can move the audio like this. And when I press shift and use my mouse wheel, I can scroll through the song and the combination of those three shortcuts means that I can really, really quickly cut, move the audio and move on to the next hit. So that way I can move it like this, I can go like this, go like this and you can do very fast editing. So you see, this is very fast. And the principle always stays the same. So let's go back to what I told you. This hit is okay. This one is too late. So I cut where I want it to be, then I move it. All right. That one is too late again. Cut, move. Too late again. Cut, move. Cut, move. This one is too early. So we don't cut it here where we want it to be. We cut it right before the hit. Move it to the right. Two clicks. Very fast. All right, now it's time to have a listen to the entire song edited. Enjoy.
right, I hope you enjoyed this. Check out the course below. There's like way more information in there and it shows how I edit this entire song. It includes the multi-tracks and uh, so you can practice. That is the most important thing. Even if you've understood everything, you need to practice, practice, practice. And I'm even gonna add more chapters in the future. So in the upcoming weeks, I'm gonna add a chapter where I show you how to edit drums that have not been recorded with a click. Very interesting, because that way you can capture a really natural performance, but I will show you how you are still able to edit that performance. Anyway, you can either get the course for $49, including the multi-tracks, or much smarter, you become a member of Cola Audio Cult and get our whole entire universe, all our courses um, that we have released so far, including fantastic mentors like Jens Bogren, Ermin Hamidovic, and others. You can get multi-tracks from a lot of different like metal genres, from stoner rock up to death metal. We also have a Motorhead song in there, the original multi-tracks from Motorhead. Really cool stuff. If you enjoy this video, subscribe to this channel, leave a comment below. Uh, let me tell you how, you how you like this and how you edit drums, all right? That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.